Hello, everybody, and welcome into my latest live broadcast. It is the 10th, the 10th, is the 10th of August, 2023. It's Thursday. My name is Kerry Holzman. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, I've got a mini PC review to do. This one's quite interesting, quite intriguing. The BMAX B6 Plus. They have a B6 Pro and a B6 this and a B6 that. So there's a lot of different models from BMAX that are very, very similar, but are spec'd out very differently. Just as we think they don't get, they can't get any cheaper, they get a little bit cheaper. And the price on this one is, is quite interesting because when we look at the Amazon page for the B6 Plus, the one I've got right here, I go over here to my Amazon page and I turn on my window capture, that should work. Check this out. It shows it's $229.99, and it shows apply a $70 coupon. But here's the thing, and some people don't know this. There are products at Amazon that are priced cheaper if you're an Amazon Prime customer. So, for example, if I pull up this same page as an Amazon, Amazon Prime customer, then I see this price, 206 $206.99, and then subtract the same $70 coupon, and now you're at $136.99. That's an incredible deal for what you're getting, because let's take a look at the specs. Let me go back over to the, uh, the Amazon page here. Check this out. This is an i3. This is not a Celeron. This is not an N-series processor. We're going a step above that. A lot of these mini PCs are going to be N processors with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 or 512 gig of storage. This is an i3. It's got Windows 11 Pro, of course, but instead of 8, it's got 12 gigs of DDR4. It's got a 512 gig NVMe SSD. It supports three displays at 4K at 60 hertz. Now, the Wi-Fi is a bit older with Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are all on the same module, so that module currently could be Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. However, it's about a step and a half back. Still, for the price, look at what you're getting here. We can take a look at some of the screenshots. They're well, not screenshots, but some of the marketing materials they're sharing here on the Amazon page. Now, despite it showing playing games, I would not consider this a gaming PC. And, you know, maybe retro games. I, I don't know. You have to, depends on, the, on what it is you're trying to emulate. And uh, 12 gigs. So that's four gigs more than you'd typically get in a system similar to this. And an i3. When do we ever see an i3? So Nick Poverman said it comes out to 145.02 after the discount and taxes in New Jersey. And he says that's a great deal. Yes, considering that Windows 11 Pro from Microsoft all by itself is $199.99. Let's see, let me turn that off and let me turn back on camera one. There I am. All right, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. This box is taped closed. I have never opened this before. So we're going to do that live on camera, unscripted, all one take. Mark Gaines has now been a supporter of the channel for 15 months. Right on, Mark. Cheers, my friend. He says, hello, Carrie, and everyone in chat. Also, before the stream started, there was a contribution from... Hold on, i got to pull it up on my screen. From Paul O'Brien, who contributes to Euro, and says, hello, Daddy and Mammy, where's my child support? Hey, that stopped in your 18. You know, the judge told you that. Paul O'Brien joining us from Ireland, I believe. And Mark Gaines joining us from Northern Ireland. Thanks, guys, for supporting the channel. Also, a quick shout out to our friend Buster in Scotland. Buster contributed an Amazon gift card and a couple of uh, super thanks in a couple of videos that he's not been able to join us. He's doing well. He's just busy. And our thoughts go out to him and always want to give him a shout out. There's our good friend, Rick Lakes, with a $10 super chat. Rick joins us from Minnesota. Minnesota. Thank you, Rick, as always. And let's see. Well, I think there was one I'm missing here, and I just wanted to verify 
Sarge Tech sent an Amazon gift card just before the show started for $5. Thank you to Sarge Tech. All right, that should catch me up. Yeah, it's a crazy good deal. Richard Collins says hello. Dick Poverman said, I purchased the two 970 Evos you showed yesterday. Got them before 7 p.m. last night. It's so nice having an Amazon warehouse so close to me. I ordered five of them. <laughs> and that was one of the packages that arrived yesterday during the show. Gator contributes $2. Hey, thank you, Gator. Yeah, prices on solid state drives, crazy cheap. They've got the, uh, the Western Digital SN850X, which is a Gen 4 2 terabyte drive for $99 over at uh, Amazon and Newegg today. Crazy. I mean, I'd still, I don't know. The Western Digital drive is much, much faster at up to 7,300 megabytes per second. So if you've got a Gen 4 motherboard, consider that Western Digital SN850X. In fact, um, maybe I can pull it up here real quick just to make sure it's still on sale. These sales, they sometimes can happen, come and go very quickly. So let's just uh, turn on the window capture again. And let's go back over to Amazon and do a quick search for Western Digital SN850X. And we're looking for the two terabyte. Uh-oh, maybe it's sold out. See all buying options. Oh, well, that's no deal. Here's another one over here for 112. Oh, wait a minute. There's a $12.81 coupon. There it is. So that one right there, that'll get you to $99 or $100. I'm not quite sure. Twelve eighty one to get you to one hundred bucks even. Regardless, a really good deal on a really fast two terabyte drive from Western Digital. Uh, and I think Newegg's also matching that price right now, as of today, August tenth, two thousand twenty three. Just so you know, there's a date stamp on these videos, so you understand when you're watching something years old or brand spanking new and fresh. Okay, so we get that out of the way. Okay, back over to camera one. Go. Switch back over to my chat room so I can see you guys. All right, so <clears throat> let's unbox this bad boy and see what we got. We usually get i5s or Celerons. We don't see i3s too often, so we've seen a lot of mini PC reviews lately here. I, I suspect this is a bad. And I want to continue to review as many different varieties as possible. Because we're going to look back on this, you know, like fidget spinners, I think. Eventually, I think there's going to be far fewer manufacturers. And the product will be more commonly known, be more of a household item that people are familiar with. Right now, people are seeing these for the very first time. Most people have never seen one in person yet. So as long as... We have that uh, sort of newness advantage. We'll just continue to evaluate them and show you what's possible. Different sizes, different colors, different performance models, different purposes from HT PCs to get full gaming PCs and full desktop replacements. Okay, so VMAX. VMAX. There's my first time opening the BMAX. And on the inside, it kind of looks like that. Well, there's no kinda. It does look like this. And we've got a piece of foam here. And the computer's in a little, a little baggie right here that has a little message. Well, looks like they've written us a Dear John letter. It's a lot. But there's just a little message here. They're trying to avoid the upset customers or, you know, unnecessary support calls by getting some of the common issues that people misunderstand out of the way. My 
best wishes to be linked for customers to actually read that. The unit itself, very thin. We've got what looks like an olive drab or military green. Again, I will bring this up to the camera so you can see it up close. We've got some protective. There we go, we'll take that off. Protective plastic there over the lid. Very thin. We've got our two USB 3s and a USB type C, our power button. We've got a headphone microphone jack. Is that what that is? Yep. And then, uh, can't tell what that little that reset there. What is that? Yeah, that's going to be a reset. So you would grab like a paper clip, straight it out, and stick it in there if you had to reset this. Shouldn't have to ever use that. Unless you're doing something like trying to overclock it or something. All right, so that's the front. There's one side. There's the other side. Clearly see where the where the vents are. And then we come around the back. We can see our two USB. I'm sorry, <laughs> our two HDMI ports and a single USB in the back. That's unusual. Would like to have seen two back there. We've got our Ethernet port and our power uh, barrel style power jack, and that's it. That's all she wrote. Now to open this up, it looks like we've got four screws on the bottom there. Remember, this is the B6 Plus. There are lots of different variations of B6. This is the B6 Plus. Okay, so if it can support three display outs at 4K at 60 hertz, there's two HDMI. Where's the third one, Carrie? The third one's going to come out of your USB type C here in the front. So yeah, you're going to have an ugly cable coming out the front. I don't know why they did it that way, but you can do it. All right, let's see what else we got in the box. We have a box in the box. And in there, we've got a few accessories. Power plug, got to have that. It doesn't say VMAX on it, so... I would get a marker or a label maker and I would write on this with a like a silver sharpie and I would write VMAX. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. A silver indelible permanent ink sharpie marker. If it were white, I'd use a typical black sharpie. These silver sharpies are easily found. Pretty much anywhere that sells Sharpies has these. And I'm just going to write, I don't need the model number or anything. I'm just going to write, ah, Vmax. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't look pretty, but it'll get the job done. The problem that we run into is people move things around. And if these two items should get separated, and then later they're reunited. If you don't have the right adapter, if you, if you found this piece and now you're looking through a box of power adapters and you're just trying them to see which ones fit, that's a sure way to smoke both the power adapter and the unit. So I think it's critical that manufacturers label, put their name on their uh, power adapter. So Sony will do this. and. Other manufacturers that are big, big manufacturers like HP and Dell will label their adapters. But these smaller manufacturers, I, I haven't seen them do it ever. So, you know, if you want it to look prettier, use a label maker. Trust me, you will thank me in the years ahead when you cannot find or you, you're wondering which adapter is it when the two get separated years from now. Get that out of the way now and it's one less stress you'll have. They've given us what appears to be about a five or six foot standard US uh, HDMI cable. We've got a very small Visa bracket here with screws, and that's if you want to mount this to the back of a monitor, or you could even potentially mount it onto the side of a desk or hang it on a wall. That's what these two screw holes right here are for. And this back.
Let's see what the inside of this looks like. Let me grab my jeweler's drivers. Jeweler's tool set here. And I'm definitely going to need my glasses so as I can see. Okay, these look like they're pretty close to the surface. Sometimes you got to go far down inside and then you got to make sure your screwdriver is narrow enough. So one screw out of each corner. Exciting video, isn't it? It'll get better in a second. Just crack this bad boy open and see what's soldered down and what's upgradable. That's an awful good price. Okay, so the serial number, everything is written facing the back. i got to remember that, so when I put this back on, there is a small little tab right there that you can reach in for like a small flat blade screwdriver or some pick or something and pop that open like so. Okay, here we are. We're all opened up. Let's take a look-see what we got going on here. All right, well, a little of everything. We do have a socketable NVMe drive. We have another M.2 slot we can use that's only NVMe times one. I think this is one X. So I think that's saying that's the speed of it. Now, a lot of times the Wi-Fi controllers are located underneath the M.2. But if we look underneath this M.2, we can see the uh, CMOS battery, but nothing else. The other M.2, we see the two wires, right? Because if an M.2 was right over this, it'd be covering up that. That's your Wi-Fi card, and unfortunately, it's soldered in there. So you cannot upgrade the Wi-Fi. Or... Well, let me rephrase. You could upgrade the Wi-Fi if you go into the BIOS or go into Windows Device Manager and disable. You don't have to, but I would disable this one. And then just pick a USB Wi-Fi adapter or Bluetooth adapter to plug in and have it on USB. But as far as like being able to open it and upgrade, that looks like a big fat no. That is soldered in. And I don't see any option for RAM being upgraded on this. And usually, usually, if you don't see the RAM next to your M.2 or somewhere along the same plane, it's likely not underneath unless it's soldered down. So I'm going to imagine that the RAM is soldered down here and you cannot upgrade the RAM. This is an Ice Lake i3-1000NG4 according to the label inside. And that black and red wire is the coming off the CMOS battery that keeps your date and time when the system is off. So yeah, I'm going to say that looks like we likely have RAM soldered down. I'm going to take out these other four screws just to poke around the other side, but I fully expect everything on the other side is soldered down. But I have been wrong before. I mean, don't, don't let that get out. Ruin my reputation of, you know, being a robot. Now, I want to be careful when I remove the motherboard because the antennas are attached here, and I really don't want to remove them if I can avoid it. And a lot of times what holds these boards in is the case itself, the I.O. ports poking through the holes. So a lot of times you have to bend the case back this can be a real problem if the case were made of metal. Some people consider 
cases made of plastic to be of undesirable quality, but I would disagree. Uh, unless they're using the metal as a large heat sink to keep everything cool, it just adds it adds weight and inflexibility anytime you need to work on the system, or they ha you have to figure out the clever way that you have to get the board out since the, you're not going to be able to bend the case like I can here. Wow. That's in there good, too. It's coming. You can see I'm bending it quite a bit to get this out of here. And I don't want to use too much force because I don't want to break those antennas off. Probably should have started at this side based on what I'm feeling. Okay, here we go. There's our other side of the board. That's our C CPU there. Underneath that fan. And as for any sort of RAM modules, um, as expected, there, there's no sockets on this side, so there'd be no reason for you to ever go into this side of it. And in those two black squares, those are where our antennas terminate and see if i can put this back in the other way around maybe put this end in first this time see if that makes my life any easier here we go ah. oh well it turns out this back piece comes off that would have made my life a lot easier because now now the motherboard has some play. There we go. So I can push the board in, make sure that it aligns with the, uh, the holes for mounting the board. I can make sure the button's pressing. I'm not trapping any cables in particular as a concern of these Wi-Fi antenna wires. They are fairly delicate, so you want to take your time and go easy with them. So yeah, RAM is going to be soldered down. You cannot upgrade the RAM. That is fascinating how that comes out so much easier than the way I did it. Just pull it back. There it is. Then I can reevaluate, realign these wires as I seat it back down. Now that I know what I'm doing, put the back side in first. then lower the unit, and then push it forward towards the front. And if it's not moving, it's because you don't have it aligned. Okay, that, that looks pretty good to me. Then I'm going to take some screws and secure that main board back down into the case so it won't move around on me anymore. making sure I'm pushing it all the way forward. And the holes that we are screwing these little screws into should be completely centered underneath the hole. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't see half of it or a quarter of it. You should see the entire hole if it's aligned properly. And if it's aligned properly, that means that it's in deep enough that you're not going to have any problem putting the backplate back on that the I.O. ports could be sticking out too far. And this just clicks in very, very easily. Way easier than bending the case around the way I did earlier. And then, of course, we can put our back cover back on, remembering that the writing faced the back of the unit. With the pull tab towards, or the cutout for sticking like a flat blade driver in towards the front of the unit. So you can add more storage. That's pretty much all you're going to be able to upgrade on this. Anything else you'll have to do through USB. And quite frankly, you could do your storage through USB too. 
Lenny Krios with a $5 super chat says, worry-free, trouble-free, PK is here. Hello, Carrie and chat. Wishing everyone well from my home planet. Well, temporarily residing in upstate New York. Don't let the Supreme Commander know that you're letting people know not of this earth. Violation. Supreme Commander will not be happy with you. Ron Barnett says, did you find the lost screw for yesterday's Mini? I have not. I ended up, uh, I did a clean install of Windows 11 on it. And, um, you know, put all the drivers back on. Put the three screws in that I had because I had to clear the bench. And I've looked everywhere, and it's here somewhere. But it's not detrimental. I mean, you would never know a screw is missing. The entire case is sealed closed. But uh, I'm sure it'll turn up. What are you going to do? You, you, you won't catch me doing that again. I will always make sure that I have the screws shaken out here on the counter before I walk it up to the camera again. Sometimes there are moments that uh, reflect a permanent change moving forward, and that was a moment that you'd think I'd know better by now, but I can guarantee I know better now. I replicated taking a couple of the other screws and mimicking dropping them from the same approximate place I was standing in the same height. And almost immediately when I dropped them, they disappear. So I found them, or I found the missing one, and one of the ones I dropped, I can't find. I'm not sure which way it is. I think I found both ones I've dropped. And I, the other one, I, I don't know where else to look. I, it's, uh, it's a very, very tiny screw, and it's very difficult to see. But I've looked for it a half dozen times and moved some things around. And I'm wondering if I got caught up on my pants or in my shoe, and then I ended up walking and kicking it. That has happened to me before. I was once taking off a shoe and a screw was between the tongue of the shoe and the lace. How can you possibly do that on purpose? Either way, it's not a big deal. And it's going to be a giveaway machine, so I'm not worried about uh, warranty. I am sure, I am sure that screw is, will turn up, but... I don't want to postpone shipping the computer to a selected recipient over a stupid screw that doesn't really matter. And it's hidden behind a rubber foot. The only time you're ever going to know that screw is missing is when you go to take it apart. All right, let's get this thing plugged in and turned on and see what it boots up like. Again, this has all been unboxed for the very first time live on camera here. So I have no idea what version of Windows we have. I know it's Windows 11 Pro, but I don't know as it's 21H2, 22H2. We can plug into either of these HDMI ports. I'm going to leave the network not plugged in at this time so we can get through local accounts set up on Windows 11. And I'm going to plug the USB wife, um, the USB dongle for the key wireless keyboard and mouse share the same dongle. It's nice. So I'm going to go over here now to my HDMI input on the capture card, and we'll take camera one and we'll stick it in the corner. Just like that. Good enough. And three, two, one, power on. See how long our first boot takes. Keeping in mind a first boot is typically a little bit longer than a regular boot. I see Kelly Stewart joining us, my friend Ron Hilliers in the chat room. Welcome in, gentlemen. OG Gaming and Steve Mercure joining us, as well as, well as Douglas Bruchel. Anna Linda says at least the rubber feet on the BMAX have holes in them so you can get to the screws. Amen, brother. For sure. You know I appreciate that. Starstick said that's a perfect color for an army vet giveaway. It is, isn't it? All right. Yes, if you're watching the video, 
which I'm assuming if you can hear my voice, you're watching this video. Be sure and click the little gear icon and verify you're watching it in 1080 resolution. Windows will change it and you won't even know. Not because you did anything, just something you can, you can thank YouTube for. So be sure, you may not realize you're watching in a lower res. If your bandwidth will support 1080, the video looks way better in 1080. Okay, so let's do our first setup here. Let me go full screen so I can seize it the way you guys see it. Okay. English US, yes. United States, yes. Keyboard layout, United States, yes. Secondary language keyboard, no, skip. License agreement, accept. Oh, look at this. It's not forcing us to get on the network. User, enter, enter. Nice, no bypass in a row needed. Keep location on, turn everything else off. Keep our date and time always synchronized at all times. And uh, even after daylight saving of uh, time or just the normal loss of seconds or gain of seconds that occurs because no clock is perfect unless it's like the atomic clock or something. So anyway, I like to keep location settings on. Those of you who are regular here already know all this. Paul O'Brien says, hello, daddy. I want a DNA test. Jason Wyrick said, did I miss anything? Nah, just me talking. Nev Wells is a rare live stream catch for me. I do respect the community focus with so much nasty stuff on the internet. It's a breath of fresh air. Long may it continue. Thank you, Nev. Uh, agreed. I think we can turn Nev blue, don't you? Do you think it's time? So as I start to recognize uh, your name, so in other words, you, you participated in the chat often enough that I'm starting to see your name. Like if you keep changing your name, then you're not helping yourself. And then also, I'm also verifying whether or not the things you have to say, are they positive? Or are they, are they um, all about you? Or are they about the community? Are they beneficial to the community? Or are we just talking about you? Just things like that. Are they nasty? Is it spam? Is it promotional? Is it, look at me, I want attention. And as long as you're just a regular old nice person, and we get to see you in the chat on a regular basis, somewhat regular, I turn you blue, just as I've done here. It doesn't cost anything. That helps me identify in the future if I forget your name. And I'm like, that name before? If you're blue, obviously, I've already given you my seal of approval. Uh, let's see what's going on now over here at, oh, we did finish booting. Good, good, good. So now I'm going to grab my internet cable. I'm going to plug that here in the back. And then I'm going to go full screen over here on my side of things. So I, again, I, I want to see it the way you guys can see it. You got to appreciate the irony that you guys can see the video better than I can. And what I want to do here is I want to check the device manager. Right click on the start button, device manager. And I'm curious what kind of Ethernet adapter we've got in this bad boy. And it appears to be a Realtek gigabit Ethernet controller and Realtek wireless LAN 802.11ac. That's Wi-Fi 5. That's soldered in. And then there's our Bluetooth 4.2. That's, that's a part of this device below it. Okay, is there anything else I want to look at? We want to make sure that we have a security component in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We should have a security component for our TPM device for Windows 11 compatibility. I do not see it. Oh no. Let's take a look here under properties. 
And we've got an Intel Core i3 1000 NG4. There's our 12 gigs of RAM. 11.7 gigs is available because 0.3 gigs is used for our integrated GPU. We are running 22H2. I'm happy to see that. But I am concerned that I don't see a TPM module. So let's try something here. Let's do a check this. Start without your data here. Uncheck that. Close this out and reopen again so I don't get all that junk. All right. So, uh, Windows 11 Health check, I guess. How to use the PC Health Check app. Where do I download? You don't have it, you can install it by going here. Okay, so we're going to download that. And we'll install it. That. Install. It's a small little application. You can download Microsoft, from Microsoft to verify that your computer is Windows 11 compliant. Because what I'm looking at, it doesn't appear to be. Tried to install this twice. Silly me. All right, so here's what it looks like. I need to change my resolution here on the tablet. It always puts me at 144p. It's maddening. Go to quality, go to advanced, choose 1080p. And all of a sudden, my picture is super vivid. Attention required. Windows update. Attention required. Check now. This PC doesn't currently meet Windows 11 system requirements. TPM 2.0 must be supported. Okay, this, this is unacceptable. So the question now is, do we have TPM and it's simply not enabled in the BIOS? Or is that the reason why BMAX is selling this cheap and they want to slip it by us? They should not have been able to install Windows 11, so BMAX had to force Windows 11 on this. And if this is the way BMAX is going to operate their business, then we don't want to do business with them when we do not want to recommend any of their products. I'm not there yet, but I'm just warning you. If, there's, if, if they've done that dirty dog thing of trying to hide the Windows 11 lack of compatibility, that is not acceptable. No reputable company would ever do that. That would say a lot about the management style of this company. So I don't want to come to that conclusion yet. Maybe it's a simple mistake that somebody didn't turn it on. An Intel i3 1000 NG4. It's uh, two cores with four threads. Um, oh, we got a lot of options in here. Trusted computing. Security device support is enabled. Well, this doesn't look good. Going through the BIOS. Nothing there. Paul O'Brien contributes two euro in Super Chat. Says, to all my fave uncles and cousins, give me my money. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. This is uh, CPU-related settings, CPU power management settings. Uh, there are power limit settings that we can increase. It looks like this is at 35 watts. Um, PTT. I 
Okay, that's interesting. DTPM or PTT plus did a platform trusted. Don't know. Platform trust technology. So those are usually there's two places you go in. So that's the other place I was looking for. Everything else, the only other thing I would ask is uh, if we look again at what that processor is. I3 1000 NG4. Okay, I3 1000 NG4. Let me see. Windows 11 compatible CPUs, Intel. And the first link will give us a Microsoft website here to show us all the Intel compatible CPUs. So let me go to my window capture. Let's do that. This is an Intel i3, or i3, 1000. Say it was a G1. Can't remember. Back. Pick another. One thousand NG4. Thousand. That's G4 right here. I think that's it. Is i3 1000 NG4 Windows 11 compatible? Uh, this chip was launched in the second quarter of 2020. It's an entry level laptop CPU. 1.1 gigahertz with a boost of 3.2. Hmm, I know that doesn't help us too much. Okay. Go back over to the HTML input. Let's save what we've changed. Oh. Let that reboot. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Daryl Cockerham said, Carrie, I was poking around on B and H the other day and found the Oyen 8 terabyte drive for $759. So it sure would be nice if my viewers would look at my videos, you know, because I already covered that. If we look at um, well, let's do this. Let's go back to full screen over here for me. And I'll just show you. If you go to YouTube of all places. Oh, this has Chrome. They put Chrome on here, and they put those desktop icons on here. Okay. Well, there's something suspicious going on with how they've installed this OS. Uh, let's go to... What's that? Edge. We'll go to YouTube. And we'll type in... Harry Holzman. And we'll click on the channel here. And we'll look under videos. So five days ago, I posted a video about the Oyen Digital 8 terabyte drive, $759. 
So anyway, just so you guys know, um, a lot of the information that you guys are sharing with me, I've already posted. I can't tell you how many times this happens. You guys are like, oh, I want to tell Carrie this. He needs to know without realizing I've already discussed. Not only do I already know, I already made a video on it. So maybe just don't. I, if I don't know, then let's leave it that way. Because, because the amount of times I have to tell people, I appreciate the effort, but we've already covered this. Um, it's It's very repetitive and I don't know. I, I understand the, your intent is there to help, but I've already, I went out of my way to make sure everybody knew about that. Apparently I wasn't successful. Garfield Rupe said, I've never built a computer, but I've been watching you long enough to know when to say something is off technically. And it certainly is. That is very, very odd. Davis Parsons said I missed his super chat. Oh, fix that. My apologies, Davis. Let me take a look and see if I've missed anybody else. Davis Parsons with a $10 super chat said I'm late. Been to a doctor's appointment. Here's my late fee. Thank you, Davis. Sorry, I missed that one. But thanks for letting me know. All right, let me go back to OBS. That's what I'm Okay. So this is tricky. What we have here is a Windows 10 computer. That's what it appears to be. And the problem when you force Windows 11 onto it is that Microsoft has stated time and time again that if your computer does not meet Windows 11 requirements and you still put Windows 11 on it, you are not entitled to updates. Now, that leads to a bunch of boneheads going, oh, I'm getting my updates. Yes. What did I just say? You said I'm not entitled to updates, but I'm getting them. That's right. But you're not entitled to them. Yeah, but I'm getting them. Like, they can't seem to get past the point of today. I'm talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about next month. I'm talking about a year from now. Microsoft may decide it is within their rights to withhold updates at a future point in time for any computers running Windows 11 that do not meet Windows 11 compatibility requirements. So just because you're getting updates today, it'd be very, very naive of you to think that because it's doing that today, it's going to continue doing that indefinitely. That, well, it works, so therefore it's going to always work. It doesn't work. Microsoft has made it very clear. They reserve the right to turn off updates at any point for Windows 11 computers that don't meet Windows 11 com uh, compatibility requirements. And when it happens, you may not realize it. It may take you a while to realize you haven't gotten any updates in a while. And the way you find out might be because you got infected and you're gonna wonder how it happened or maybe your data got encrypted, or maybe your identity got stolen, and you're gonna work backwards, and you're gonna say, well, it says this was fixed in a patch. I don't have the patch. Why don't I have the patch? Oh, that's that thing Kerry said months ago, weeks ago, years ago, warned us that this day was likely going to come, and I said, you're a bonehead. You don't know what you're talking about. It works fine. You think I've been through this a few times with people? I've been mean, going back from previous operating systems and people that wouldn't let go of XP. Uh, it's the same thing. People are just being boneheads. Look, if you want to do that, knock yourself out. And I'm glad you're getting your updates, okay? But for a manufacturer to sell a PC advertised as having Windows 11 implies that that's a Windows 11 compatible computer. And apparently it isn't. So... When an individual wants to act like a bonehead, that's their freedom. When a manufacturer is deceiving the public with uh, misleading or uh, omitting critical information regarding Windows 11 compatibility in order to create the illusion of a higher valued product, that's an unacceptable business practice that's shameful and disgraceful. Now, is that what's happening here? Uh, it's certainly what it appears to be. However, I do want to make sure that it's just not a setting in the BIOS we have to adjust. Windows update. 
Uh, no, I don't want Windows Update. I want uh, Device Manager. Device Manager. We should see a security device in here, and we do not have a security device. That means there's no TPM. And with no TPM, what you've got is a Windows 10 computer. So how do you unload your inventory of Windows 10 computers if everybody wants Windows 11? You force a Windows 11 upgrade onto it or create a Windows 11 image that bypasses the security check. It's disgraceful. Now, I will reach out to the folks at BMAX and confirm whether or not this has a TPM or a BIOS update that enables a TPM. But until such time, I am recommending that if you're going to buy this machine, do not run Windows 11 on it. Only use um, Linux or Windows 10 on this machine. If you decide to put Windows 11 on it, know that updates may stop at any point during your using Windows 11. And if that should happen, there's nobody for you to complain to who's going to do anything to assist you or compensate you. You did that to yourself. Now, with the one exception being that if you bought this machine from BMAX or any other manufacturer, like we had that machine from Chewy that was running Windows 11 that had no TPM. Remember when I said there, there's a lot of these manufacturers coming out of the woodwork. There's like a gold rush for many PCs. And they're all not reputable and they're all not honest. And in doing these reviews, what I'm trying to do is weed them out and give you guys a heads up so you're prepared. Some units may cost more, but it may be because they're legit. Other units may cost less because they're not legit, that they're trying to sneak something by you. I don't have 100%, I'm not 100% certain that it's just not a mistake, but I'm certainly leaning that mistakes like this shouldn't be possible with a system integrator that knows exactly what they're doing, okay? It's unacceptable. BMAC sent me the computer to review. So I'm personally offended that they thought they could pull one off and that I would be an accomplice in this deception, which I refuse to be. And if this is how B-Link is going to disrespect us, then we won't showcase any other B-Link product ever again. And so when people ask me, what do you think of BMAX, I will point them to this video. Arvale says, Bing search said the Intel 1000 NG4 does include a TPM function. CPU has a TDP of 9 watts and comes with an Intel AES new instructions and secure key. I would hope that there's a BIOS setting somewhere or a BIOS update that addresses this. A CPU made in 2020 should have a built-in TPM module. William Lin suggests I search for security processor in CTPM. Let's take a look at that. Thank you, William. Let me go over here to full screen mode for me. Security processor. shows nothing. Yeah, that shows there is no trusted platform module seen. That's typically because the CPU doesn't have that feature or the feature's not enabled in the BIOS. Once again, I'm gonna go back over here, restart this computer and get back into that BIOS one more time. Nick Poverman said, you should see the craziness on eBay. People are selling computers that are not compatible with Windows 11 and selling them with Windows 11 on them. Yes, I expect somebody sitting at home to behave in that way. They're not professionals. They're just trying to earn a buck and they'll deceive and manipulate other people in order to earn a dollar. Want to 
professional company behaves like that, um, it is absolutely unex unex unacceptable. So I want to look in here one more time. integrated Thunderbolt support. I have a suspicion that that ain't going to work, but I'm going to turn it on. Um, I'm wondering if this BIOS wasn't even intended for this board. Where's Jamie McGregor when I need him? Can't remember or was it under here? PTT config. PTT not applicable. That is um that is going to be a problem. Well, we have the ability to disable the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you wanted to put a, a, an upgraded Wi-Fi or Bluetooth adapter via USB, and you didn't want to confuse yourself by having two Wi-Fi adapters and two Bluetooth adapters, you could come into the BIOS and disable that one that's soldered down at the very least. So that's good. Better if it wasn't soldered down. Where was the other area for the... Uh... I know it was in here somewhere. Trusted computing. Security device support enabled. No security device found. See, that suggests to me the CPU does not have a TPM module, or this BIOS is not the right BIOS for this system. Save and exit. You know what? Let's do this. Let's load restore defaults. Let's save these changes and exit. Yeah. Well, I think what we got here is an attempt to deceive the public. So I'm going to confirm with BMAX what I believe to be true and give them an opportunity to correct me if I'm wrong. And if I'm not wrong, this will be the last BMAX product you see on the channel. Starshine says, how to geek has an article TPM could... Hmm. Oh, it's tpm.msc. Yeah, we got a problem. This is a very serious problem, one that should not be taken lightly, because we're talking about people's identity. We're talking about your 
credit, the money in your bank account, all of that potentially at risk because this company has either made a gross error or has done so intentionally to offload undesirable merchandise. Oh, that is very upsetting. I would put Windows 10 on this. I'm very curious what the speed or the performance of the NVMe drive is. I don't expect it to be mind blowing, but well, we have the machine out and up uh, on the desktop here. Grab my crystal disk mark. Crystal disk mark portable, drag that out to the desktop. to eject. Okay. I'm going to go over here to still the smart portable 64 bit S. Run all the tests on the C drive and see what kind of performance numbers we get out of it. William Lynn said, did BMAX say the B6 was Windows 11 ready? It ships with Windows 11 Pro, William. You don't get a choice of having Windows 10. If it ships with Windows 11 Pro, it's advertised with Windows 11 Pro, but it is not compatible with Windows 11 Pro. That is the deception. Performance on this NVMe is decent at a Gen 3 drive running at just under 2,500 megabytes per second on sequential reads. That's fair for this level of PC. Hey, camera girl, would you do me a favor and send an email to our contact at BMAX? and verify the B6 Plus that ships with Windows 11 Pro is in fact Windows 11 compatible because the computer says it's not Windows 11 compatible okay. and that it does not have a TPM. And as, what do we have to do to turn the TPM on or to activate the TPM? I don't want to imply anything yet. Right. If they come back and say there's no way to turn TPM on, then they're deceiving the public and they're offloading what is essentially a Windows 10 computer disguised as a Windows 11 computer in order to offload old inventory. So, thank you. All right, so I got camera girl going to work on that. Be sure and get your cape. I can't see any reason why you couldn't just throw Windows 10 on here, to be honest. And it would be fine, at least until the end of 2025. You could probably also put Ubuntu on there if you wanted to play around with Linux. Or if you're one of those people that don't care about your, having your identity stolen and you want to bypass all the compatibility checks that are put there for your safety, you know, you might be somebody who doesn't wear a seatbelt. You might be somebody who... You know, when, when equipment is offered to help keep you protected, you don't use it. You might be somebody who goes out on a boat, doesn't even bring a life vest with you. You know, that's you. Don't let me get in your way of killing yourself or having bad things happen. That's your choice, your freedom, your life. You want to throw it away? Throw it away. Do you want to risk it over something so stupid? Be my guest. Is your identity that worthless to you? You don't care? It's worth saving a few extra dollars? You have every right to come to that conclusion and feel so little of yourself if that's what you want to do. But for the rest of us, I would avoid this BMAX, not even this model. I would avoid BMAX entirely until we have a clear answer on this. There are too many other brands, very competitive price points, that there's nothing compelling about this BMAX to make it worth the risk you're taking by running Windows 11 on it and having it connected to the internet and then using that to pay bills or to buy things online. 
Yeah, that is uh that is a shame. Very, very disappointed with B Max right now. And if I'd have thought for one minute that B Max was a company like this, we wouldn't be isolating a couple hours out of the day specifically dedicated to evaluating their product. This isn't the kind of reviews I want to do. Bull142 says, Carrie, check your email. Okay. V Manor says, I saw a YouTube video about how to enable TPM and secure boot out of BMAX. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what that video says. They've got, they go into trusted computing, security device support disabled, no security device found. Okay, so they changed that to enabled. We already did that. What else do they do? Whoa, secure boot, okay. Oh, we didn't turn secure boot on, did we? In secure boot mode, they set to standard. Okay, let me pause that video. It still shouldn't have shipped this way. That's unacceptable. The customer buying a PC at this level likely doesn't have the technical knowledge. This should have been done from the factory. But if it makes it work, then there's, we're going to call it a mistake in configuration. So let's see. Um, there's our final numbers. So 2491 on the sequential writes, 1953, um, 2491 megabytes per second on the sequential reads. 1953 megabytes per second on the sequential writes. Let me go full screen here real quick and get back in the BIOS, and then I'll check my email. So back over here, close this, put this down, start. Jeff H. sends a $25 Amazon gift card. He said, here's a little something for all the help with my new NAS, my new Synology. Well, thank you, Jeff H., for the Amazon gift card. Pressing delete, trying to get in the bias. There we go. And then Bull142 sent an Amazon gift card for $10. Right on. Thank you, Bull142. Lou Greenia sends $25 via PayPal. And our good friend Kelly Stewart with a $25 Amazon gift card. Thank you to Kelly Stewart. Thank you, Bull142. Thank you, Jeff H. Thank you, Luke Greenia. You guys rock. Okay, now. Let's go to boot. Under security, secure, where's secure boot? Security. Secure boot. That could be a problem. Let's enable secure boot. What does that say? Secure boot can be enabled when systems in user mode repeat after rolling platform key. Okay, secure boot mode, standard. Um, it's not doing anything at all. Oh, hello. And something. Back in the BIOS again. Okay. Your security under secure boot. Change this to enabled. And escape and save and exit. 
Okay, let's see what this does. Brand new computer. This should have been properly configured by the manufacturer before being sent out to a customer. So if it solves it, we'll chalk it up as a mistake. But if it doesn't solve it, well, the inquiry to BMAX will hopefully lead us to an acceptable resolution. Yeah, it says a TPM cannot be found. Let's go back in the device manager. No security device, no security processors in here. Okay, let me go back into the BIOS one more time. So I haven't watched this whole video. I stopped it there thinking that was the missing piece. There may be more missing pieces. I'm only a third of the way through the video. So I want to just go back in this video and see that we so security is so under trusted computing. Let's go back under trusted computing, which was where trusted computing. We set this to enabled, even though it says no security. See what else he does. So then under security, he goes to secure boot. Changes it to enabled, changes the boot mode to standard. And he goes to this goes to save changes and exit. Yeah. Well, we are not having as much luck. Now, I don't know what this block SID is. I would think we'd want that enabled. That option doesn't appear on his screen. It's Bmax B2. And then uh, platform settings. Trusted compute. Oh, well, that's not what I want.
only other thing is the um, TPM setting was at. I, I keep forgetting where I found it. a very strange BIOS. It, it just doesn't feel like this BIOS belongs on this board, or it's like a one-size-all, one-size-fits-all BIOS. There's a lot of features this BIOS is offering the board doesn't have. I mean, a lot. Digital TPM. I think that's, no, that's P PTT. Or does it mean discrete TPM? Should be PTT. For some reason, it was set to discrete. Let me set it back just to try it. Where, where am I? Advanced under the PCH-FW configuration. Okay, so I got to remember. Save changes and exit. Oops. Dark Umbre says, according to Bing AI, the i3-1000NG4 does not have a dedicated TPM. Hello, Brian said, that's a lot of crap in there, Bios. <laughs> there is a lot. So let's see, uh, click under on the start menu and go to device manager. There is no security device, no security processor found. One more time into the BIOS, we'll change that other setting back to PTT, platform trust technology. That's it. So if it's not going to find it, I would conclude that there isn't one there, but we will confirm this with BMAX. In the meantime, I would strongly uh, recommend you avoid any BMAX products that are advertised as being, uh, you know, including Windows 11, because you might end up with a machine like this. And if they're a manufacturer who behaves that way, then, you know, what else will they be seeing as uh, fair play? Because I disagree. I don't think it's fair play at all. Right click back over to device manager. And there is no security processor here. We'll scan it just to make sure we're not missing any devices. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. 
it certainly appears that this chip does not have a TPM module on it, which is weird because I thought all the modern Intel chips had them, but I guess maybe on the really low end chips, they remove it just to keep the price down. I don't know. No idea. So with that, let me go back over to camera one full screen. Does anybody have any questions for me? I think that's going to wrap up the review. I will do a follow-up when I hear back from BMAX. And then, uh, if you never see another BMAX product on this channel, then you can come to your own conclusion about what happened, you know, if you missed the follow-up video. But I will follow up about it. Not happy. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for all your support and your kindness. I will see you all tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Until next time, bye for now.